chemical combination of each of these, they really need to get this test. It's going to advance. <laughs> Baby, all right, to death. <laughs> we're good. We're on the side. We're, we're agile. We're learning. Uh, all right, so the main focus right now in the industry, there's been a lot with DevOps or the combination of development and operations, focusing on continuous delivery to the customer. A lot of that is then focused on automation. How do we take what's currently manually done and begin to speed that process up, shift everything to the left, and involve everybody along that process? Not have development own a piece, hand it off, have operations, which then leads to implementation. But does that mean if we're doing all of that, that we're agile? Maybe, but it's more than that because agile is a mindset. It's about constant learning, constant evolving, being an expert for a moment in time, really until you encounter something new. And then it's leaning on those tools that you're gathering, that you're adding to your tool belt and knowing when to use them and really then seeking what applies to your team, your organization and figuring out what works. And that's where Scaled Agile comes in. All right, my turn. So friends, new friends, new faces. So folks uh, virtually, how many do we have? 30. Very good. Awesome. Hopefully you guys can hear me. So as a Heather just walked through things, right? We are now we seeing a lot of organizations moving into DevOps um, and some are really mature. And now what's next? Oh. She's going to help because we're all right. <laughs> and we're not that's not working. No worries. There you go. Um, so business agility. That's why you guys are all here. We'd like to hear about um, scaled agile framework. It's also most people call it the same, which is really about business agility. So when you hear the word business agility, what comes to mind? How would you describe business agility? Just real quick. One or two words. Flexible. Flexible. Reacting. Reacting. Don't let me bow and told you. <laughs> One more. Speed, you said? Awesome. So as you guys saw in prior slides, it's about you know starting agile development, moving into DevOps, and now it's not enough. It's it's looking at more at the enterprise level, and that's where business agility comes in. Okay, so now we're gonna um, introduce you to a lot of some words. Don't be alarmed, it's okay. All this information is publicly free, and I'll help you guys take, I'm gonna take you guys to the website, and then tonight, before you go to sleep, you can read through it. <laughs> I call Heather, okay? So, um, SAFE, um, the creator of SAFE is Mr. Dean Lefnwall, um, and he is a really smart guy and very passionate about this, and essentially, business agility is ability to adapt to market changes quickly able to respond to things, right? And we discovered that we actually experienced that during the pandemic. We saw businesses, you know, going different direction, that kind of thing. I remember even my um, my favorite place for breakfast, they had to come up with a so that I can order my food. So that's essentially what business agility and um, SAFE provides that practices the techniques, the principles to help organizations move into, do, into business agility. Okay, so how do we do business agility? So SAFE provides these seven core competencies. Okay, um, for those um, folks that have done agile transformation, starting with a team level, what do we always say? It always starts at the leadership. So SAFE does the same thing. That's your uh, starting point, Lean Agile Leadership. This competency focuses on helping Lean Agile leaders drive the organizational change by setting the vision, the strategy, okay, and to help form the teams. Then, team and technical agility. This is your Agile teams. So I'm getting a cue, see if this is what happens. So let me back up a little bit. I'm gonna take you to the website. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. Okay. okay, so, let me, um, we, have a, we have handouts for you guys um, if you're in person, and I think uh, we will send this deck out. So on your handout, um, you can go to Scaled Agile Framework website, 
and you're going to get this big picture. And don't be alarmed. Don't be scared. It's okay. The beauty of this um, safe, it is uh, online knowledge base of really proven practices and techniques and principles to help implement Lean Agile. So all these icons, if you want to learn more about it, for example, what is Kanban? I've never heard of that. I want to learn about it. So you can simply click on Kanban icon at the bottom, and it will take you to additional information, detailed information, more information that you want, want to know probably in one city. Okay, so this is the safe big picture. Um, we're going to do a quick deep dive on business agility. So Heather's going to click on overview tab. So this is really the focus of the how to implement safe. So again, there are seven core competencies. Um, so I covered Lean Agile Leadership. Now I'm going to go to team and technical agility. So if you're in a transformation today and you've already done your team level agile, right? So we really emphasize now bring in some technical agility. And again, some folks are already doing it by applying DevOps, right? Um, looking at quality, really intentional. So that's kind of the focus of that core competencies. The next one is agile product delivery. So SAFE provides this competency to where it focuses on product development. Focus on customer. What does the customer needs are? Sent, making the customer as a central point. Right? Um, and then applying some design thinking and um, putting all of your agile teams and making a team of agile teams called Agile Really Strain. So just like an agile team, you have all these team ceremonies. When you get to the Agile product delivery competency, this is where you're going to hear a lot of Agile release trains um, to where 50 to 125 members of an Agile team will be planning together and to still deliver incrementally. And at times, it's not enough to have a single Agile release train. Therefore, we knock on the next competency. It's called Enterprise Solution Delivery. This is where um, it helps facilitate multiple Agile release frames. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Heather, who's going to cover the right side. All right, so you covered the foundation. Once we get past that, now we start to go even further. And we begin to focus on the Lean Portfolio Management. The three dimensions there, you'll see it starts with the top one, and I know it's fuzzy to read for those in the room, especially if you're far back. So that's the strategy and investment funding. That starts with your senior executives, partnered with enterprise architecture and your business owners. Really focusing now to say, what does that funding look like? What's our target? Where do we want to head? And building that vision for which you're going to apply all that funding to then hand off to the next stage, which is the agile portfolio operations. There, within that section is the execution. How are you handing it off to those teams, to the Agile release train, empowering them to help formulate how you're going to bring that vision to fruition. That's that decentralized decision making that you've now set the target from the top. The teams are going to figure out how do we achieve that along the way based on the parameters that we've set forth. You'll find in there your Scrum Masters, your RTE, or your release train engineer, who's kind of that at the train level, partnering in the execution, and then you'll hear Agile Portfolio Operations, or potentially the Lean Agile Center of Excellence. It really depends. A lot of companies will set that up. It's where you'll see your coaches. It's where you're looking for alignment across the enterprise, as you may have several arts, or even if you're having one, setting forth those standards. How are we going to execute upon these visions? And then the last one is Lean Governance. As you're executing, are you achieving those benefits? Are you measuring, looking at compliance, looking at security, all of those types of things and adhering? So there's a whole check cycle through that. That's now your lean portfolio management. Then you lead into organizational agility. Within there, some of this will resonate. That first one of lean thinking people and agile teams. This is where your agile manifesto comes in. Within the scaled agile framework, the house of lean and understanding the manifesto. Are you really adhering to those? Everything that you're doing, does that cycle back to those values and those principles? And if not, why? Are we tethering back to that? 
We need to be able to answer those questions. Then the next part of that is your lean business operations. Don't just automate or think through the way business works today. Just think through how business should work tomorrow and automate that. Lean it out and understand what leads to those efficiencies and how we make forward momentum, which then leads to your strategy. Karina talked on business agility. Your strategy agility is being able to react to the market quickly. Understand that, have the processes in place, have the funding that allows you to be nimble. You're outcome based now, moving away from projects and really thinking through if the investment's there, continue to invest. If it's not, then stop, hit it, change where you need to go and react to the market as it's need and ideally be forward thinking, have your pulse and pay attention to what's happening so you don't get caught behind. The third then is your continuous learning culture. That's the heart of all of this as well. How are we paying attention to those adapting methods? We talked earlier, agile is not a point in time. It's not a destination. It's a continuous journey. It's learning, it's questioning, it's adapting along the way. How do we build that into our culture? And that's everybody throughout the organization, not just one team, not just one layer. This is all the way up and down, but everybody begins to question that. How do we drive innovation? Empower people to think different. Empower people to try things. Try them so that the outcome is not healthy or not where we wanted, that we didn't spend too much, that it's our detriment, but really allowing us to try things out, learn from that, and continue moving forward. It's the best way that we're gonna find those best efficiencies uh, and ways that really move that. And then focusing on relentless improvement. So that last one is your inspect and adapt. Think of that as your retrospective, but at a larger scale. Really doing the plan, do, check, adjust, and getting to the heart. So problem solving, not just with a band-aid of how do we get past this, but what's the root cause? And how do we address the root cause so that these don't come up again and that we're thinking towards the future? Those are the seven core competencies that SAFE really says is the focus for moving forward within the Skilled Agile framework. Oh, can you not get back? Please. Because they've been on this journey for quite a while, Scaled Agile has put together what they would recommend as the implementation roadmap. By no means does that prescriptive, but you'll see on the aspects that Karina talked through, a lot of this then supports those seven core competencies. So you'll see the start of the journey is really now focusing in on train the lean agile tra or change agents. Those that are gonna go out and help the company understand where we're going, create the vision. So that's oftentimes your senior executives. They need to create that path. What's the North Star? Where are we headed and why are we headed there? We're headed there. Tethers in and say, I want to on this. Now, oh, hold on, we're gonna go, back. okay. So then each of the badges up above, those are certifications that you can receive. Should you go after every one of them? I question if you did, doesn't mean you can't, uh, but I would focus on those that really provide you the most value uh, through that. And those are certification classes that re-up every year, but they get down into the weeds of each one of those. The early ones are higher level and more broad spectrum. So they're gonna focus on the entire framework. Your SPCs, your leading safe is for those uh, leaders within the enterprise. How do they have an understanding of what this is? And they need to know just enough at all the different layers. Your lean portfolio management, beginning to understand that and kick that off. And then starting to head down the journey of building those teams of teams. How are you supporting value streams? Supporting the customer at the end? All of that focused in. So that's where then you'll see prepare for art launch, leading through the journey, all the way through and then accelerating. So the acceleration then is continuous launching of trains, or even once you launch a train, you're not done. How are you going back and evaluating that train and ensuring those teams are maturing, looking at all that relentless improvement? It doesn't stop, there's no end. So how are we continuing to advance? It seems kind of like the product, product management training 
or whatever that is. Agile that product seems, management? Yeah, that seems a little late in the process for them to be as effective as everybody else if they're, if this is meant to be chronological. Through that? So you'll see the uh, safe product owner, product manager. That's where that'll start to engage them. I can't add walk, oh, so and then you will be able to see places. me as well. Uh, yeah, so look in the prepare for art launch. Towards the right a little bit, it's the second icon in. That's where you're kind of getting that initial, how are we onboarding you, prepare for your role, begin to build that backlog for that role, um, understand how you're breaking into features. What is a feature? What's the definition? What's needed within a feature so that you're, you're really beginning to take work and break it down versus build it up. So that's a lot of the focus there is understanding uh, if you're familiar with Agile Breakdown, you're talking, identify an epic. What's your benefit hypothesis? What's your MVP? What's that look like? The more you can define that, now we'll take that and just in time as it's getting consumed, we'll break it into features. Those have their identification as well. When teams are ready to pick that up, we'll start to break that into stories for teams to execute on. You don't want to do that story level too soon because it might sit on a shelf for a minute. And by the time you break that down, the investment you have to redo. So that's the change. Don't build up, break down. Break down just enough at each layer as you're getting ready to consume it. Does that help with that question? If there are other questions, thank you for just jumping in. <laughs> That's what I do. We appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> Colleen's not shy. <laughs> and and on, the, on the phone, too, or on the Zoom also, if there's any questions that you want all, I know Rachel's watching also to see if questions come up. Feel free to put your questions in the chat, and we'll make sure that they get asked. All right. Safe then also. We aren't going to go too much into this, uh, but they're everything. How do we measure? How do we have data points? So they do offer assessments, uh, and some of that isn't just through Scale That Job. There are other companies that they also partner with to offer assessments on how are you looking at the maturity of your teams, the maturity of the art, the maturity of the enterprise, uh, and continuing. That's never going to turn all orange where you're all across that entire thing. And in all honesty, from what I've seen, it's going to ebb and flow. You're going to focus on one thing and that'll strengthen. Something else because of a change might now start to dip. So there's going to be a constant evaluation. That's where it's ever evolving. And with that, we've given you high level skilled agile. We're kind of checking time. Hopefully we're on target here. I think we're actually right on time. We've got about 15 minutes, five for each of us. All right, so a little bit about our journey. Uh, I've been working in Agile for about 20 years uh, through many different parts. I've been working in Scaled Agile for about five years uh, in a number of different aspects. We each, you'll see, picked a different image. I picked this one uh, because I think it resonates with what my journey has been, and that is you're up high, and from up high, this river looks really calm, might look kind of nice, grab a canoe, grab a raft, you're gonna head down there, and it looks really enjoyable. The difference is, that's what a lot of people think, right? This is easy. That looks like a really calm river, go down. You'll easily navigate that. As you head down is when the fun begins. And the river resonates because each time you navigate that river, it's different. Every time you head down that, you'll encounter different things. And what you don't see is that that river might be filled with piranhas, there might be crocodiles, there might be snakes, there might be a number of different things that you're going to encounter. And I don't mean that those are people. I mean those are obstacles, those are roadblocks, those are things that as you encounter them, you need to figure out what's the best thing to do as you encounter that. And that's where you're leaning on your tool belt. And there might be rapids ahead that you just don't see yet. So while this portion of the river is calm, the future might not be. And normally, if you head down a river like this, how many of you would do that by yourself? I don't see any hands. I know I wouldn't. So this goes with the team. And normally, if I'm headed into an environment like that, where you're not close to a city, you're not close to immediate help, you're probably taking an expert guide. Somebody who's navigated this before. that can help you, and they may not have all the answers, but they've got enough tools in their belt that you can lean on them when you do encounter and they can help guide you to say, this has worked in the past, maybe we try this, and if that doesn't work, we're both gonna continue to learn together, and we're gonna continue the journey down the river. 
but know that we're going to learn along the way. We're going to have fun. We're going to see a lot of sites, and we're going to build one heck of a collaboration and partnership as we get there. And we're going to have a lot of stories to tell mm -hmm. through that journey. Yeah, no, it was in my Gmail. I, hit I got it. It's, it's not in sync. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like we're not in sync. We're trying. <laughs> I'll meet you around the river bend, and we'll see where we are there. We're definitely not going to be in sync. This is the image that I selected. Um, so a quick background about me. I am an independent uh, consultant, so I do work with many organizations uh, with their transformation from like traditional project management to like agile transformation, DevOps, and now I've been heavily focused on more business agility. So it's this is now representative of my current client. Okay, so <laughs> I think this because you know as what Heather has right, calm and everything. Every transformation starts like that. Well, at least until we start really understanding what problems we're trying to solve and why, right? Um, and digging in more on the true change because it impacts people, right? Processes, even tools sometimes. Yeah. Mainly the way we do our work, the way we have to think of executing our work. So it's like traffic jam. So there may be, there's many times to where a conversation to make a decision just go around and around in a circle for weeks or for months. So it is a true representation of that journey for me. Um, and sometimes you're on a lane alone, okay? And I'm just like, okay, great. Me as even as a consultant or my client. And I'm just like, it's okay. That's why coaching is very helpful. Change management um, uh, structure is very helpful because it is. The heart of this is still about people, okay? And there's collisions sometimes, many times. But that's part of the journey. Okay, I've always been asked, what are the successes and the failures? Honestly, to me, I love the challenges, right? Because it opens up collaboration. <clears throat> really building that relationship with people, right? The thinking, the, uh, even though at times it's not as fun being in all those sessions, but it really gets to know the people, and that's the heart of it. If I could help organization really think agile as a mindset, the growth mindset, it's okay to start. Even if it's, you don't have everything in place, just start, okay? Because we will pivot if needed. Um, what else I can share with you? Um, the, um, leadership is very important. So again, every transformation, leadership is very important. The what and the why, okay? And then um, training, education. There's a lot of terms of different practices uh, within SAFE, and sometimes very over, overwhelming, right? Um, even though if, if you've been in the Agile world, yeah, I know work breakdown structure, I may know stories, things always change, okay? Um, so just uh, my advice is that start and really have one team mindset. We're all in this together. Nobody's going to fail. We're all, if we fail, we're all going to fail. If we win, we're all going to win. So, that's my, um, that's my story, that's my journey. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and, Gina, I think. The star of the us. show. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the star of the show or not. Well, you are. Oh, you're funny. So um, what do you guys see when you see this picture? Anything come to mind? Rachel, if you wanna capture comments online, we'll do. Yeah. Drinking from the fire hose. Drinking from the fire hose, yeah. That image costs like 75 bucks, so I found a free one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that, yeah, it's the, it's the dog drinking from the, drinking from the fire hose, basically. Um, and I think this one was titled Something Joyful, so it's just kind of fun. But that's kind of the journey that I've been on with SAFE. And so, and what we started out with the Farm Credit Services of America. So we've been an agile shop for a really long time, and I think really successful in that area. But we happen to be on, have a really complex project that was kind of spinning the wheels a little bit. And I, anyone here ever experienced that before? We're maybe never. Never. Well, congratulations. You're the only one here. It's <laughs> only in this project. It's just, it's just <laughs> no. Well, so my, my journey and our journey here with Farm, at Farm Credit Services of America has been just kind of fast and furious because we had this massive, complex program spinning its wheel a little bit. 
So we had some fresh energy that came into the organization and looked, looked at us and said, what, what are different what ways that we can approach this? How can we do something different? And I'm going to, she was had her camera up about a second ago. I'm going to point to Jackie McLaughlin. She's our new VP of strategy enablement. And she came in here with experiences at other organizations with the Scaled Agile framework. To, hey, that's something maybe we should consider. And so I went around and got buy-in from different folks within the organization of, can we start here? Um, and thankfully, the answer was yes. So I got the buy-in from the stakeholders. And um, Karina said, just start. Just start. Well, believe me, we just started. And that's why that dog is in the marrows. Because we had just enough information, just enough training to get started. But what it allowed us to do was to pivot very quickly and to make a difference within that program. And so we're still learning. We're in our infancy of this journey overall, I would say, because we started in February um, with probably training in January. Maybe the training was in February. I don't know. It was, it's been a blur. But really quick, really just in time training to get us started on the Agile release train. So in our really early retros along that, our program increments are in nine week increments. We have four two week sprints within that increment. And during that first increment, we had a little bit of a retro to say, what's the feedback for how this is going so far? And I'll have to put on my glasses because I'm an older lady, and so I'm going to have to catch up here. So some quotes that I had captured from that time frame was, feature writing is really time consuming, and it's totally worth it. Data will highlight areas of improvement. Safe organizes conversations and collaboration. Getting observability in the overall delivery of software. It allows us to understand velocity, which allows for better planning. We'll be able to use data to make decisions. And 21.1, which was the name of that program increment, was the roughest because it was the first, and we are learning so much. And so even within that first nine weeks of being on safe, there was a lot of positivity there. Um, we did switch tools and just a tool to help us understand how we were doing in our development life cycle. So we were using something called LinkIt. We switched to Azure DevOps, gives a lot more transparency into what was going on, which that was another bonus there where we could get some dashboards of our progress. Um, so we had much, much, much better transparency. It was interesting because early on in our journey, I would hear people come, well, commenting, I'll say, about, oh, we're having some really tough conversations. Oh, gosh, this is really hard. And my response was, well, good, because we were having tough conversations anyway, but they were just kind of too late. So the earlier we have those tough conversations, the better off we are. To me, that's really a benefit that we're getting out of this new, new methodology. So I have three favorite things that I thought I'd share about this, and these are in no particular order. Um, one of those is just really the visibility of the planning that we have and the sharing of that. Another one is the increased collaboration. Um, and then another one that I, I really enjoy because I get to facilitate it is just the product showcases. At the end of each program increment, for a product showcase kind of showing off some highlights of the work completed during the previous four sprints. And so that's a lot of fun because we shared out with 150 stakeholders to say, hey, look at what we've done. And so that's a really fun thing to do. We get great feedback on that. So we are still in our infancy. We are definitely learning and continue to grow, but I'm just so glad that we're heading, I believe, in the right direction. So that's that's my my journey. Yeah. Yeah. What you were doing before, because you guys have been agile for a while, right? For a while. Yeah. And so what I would say a key difference is, is just that um, we're agile within individual teams. Um, but this is requiring teams to work together. So the program that we have now has 10, 8, 10 teams, somewhere in there. About 130 people. So Agile, when we were doing it before, just within a given development team or even within a couple of teams, they could work really well and effectively together on that Agile journey. But when we had to plan across 10-ish um, teams and making sure we're all moving in the right direction and making sure the, the dependencies that one team had on another team was understood, that was just a lot more challenging. There, it was too easy to be siloed in what we were trying to accomplish. And so... With SAFE, it's scaling that agile across those different teams to bring that together. Does it result in a lot more meetings? There are a lot of more. There are some more meetings. I will say there are. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, and that's, I think, part of the journey is for us to figure out is how to right size the number and the timing of those meetings and of those ceremonies. So we are leveraging the structure that SAFE provides. And then I think it's up to, up to us to inspect and adapt of where's the right balance within there. So there are more meetings, but there needed to be more meetings because we weren't collaborating as well as we could have. So 
couple online updates. Um, Star Heather loves your your analogy for the journey and love the river. Um, Robin commented that at, at, at NFM, um, they focus on reflecting and adapting. And like everyone has said, um, it, each project is different, so you have to be adaptive. And then she included a keep calm and adapt on. Right. Very good. Other comments or questions for anyone? Anyone want to share their journey? Because Stacey, you guys are on this journey at Warner too, right? Well, yes, but I'm no longer at Warner. Oh, so, <laughs> so, so I, we'll expect them to but, talk you know, I mean, I can speak to it. it it's a similar situation where we all got certified and started, and they also use Azure DevOps um, as their tool. And um, it, it was, we were agile as well. And so the difference was the, I would say the biggest thing was the planning. So going into PI planning and having 10 teams and doing the cross, um, like, hey, what's the dependency you have over here? And how do I need to, and, and the line, I forget what it's called, the board with the lines where you, do the, the yeah, where you do all the dependencies. Yep. I mean, that was very eye-opening because a lot of the programs, when you go to a product base, a lot of those programs then cross multiple teams more than just individual agile teams. So that was a big learning moment, I think, there. Um, but that's all I'll say about that since I'm no longer there. <laughs> it's okay, funny talking about it, but I did it. Yeah, it was it was it was very um, eye opening, and I think it does a lot more for an organization as a whole with the collaboration and um, keeps you moving forward. Question for the group: How many of you have practiced and scaled that job? How many of this is it brand new? All right, so many, many are new. I can't see those online. I'm um, interested to hear what you have to say, but uh, hopefully you've learned something today. Oh, yeah, just, just kind of curious of all the elements you talked about today. What gave you the most lift on this this massive program you were going to? Oh, gosh. I'm going to look to Jack and Karina. What element gave us the biggest lift on this on the program? You know, um, data-driven decision is, is really what we drive to in, in trying to use our data to make us better at having meaningful conversations. And one of the things of the growth pattern that we, we saw immediately is in February, we were finally able to use the data that we have to say, you were only completing about 10 to 15 percent of the features that we were committing to within our increment. In just three short PIs, we've increased that to six, like our last PI closed out a week ago, we've already increased that to 60% completion rate. And so, and that I think is, is a part of the journey. It's showing us that when you have consistency, you're building and cadencing and sequencing, and you have a common framework and a narrative behind it and common vernacular, Everybody can feel safe in committing to the work, and so we've seen that is a that's a drastic result of our short journey in just four to five months. Another online comment: um, Star Regan says that as an HR manager of a team that is not yet on art, surrounded by teams who are, we are attempting to adopt many of the safe practices and principles, and planning to share the visuals of the journey to help provide safe. Uh, way for my team leaders to openly share what they're feeling, seeing as part of their own journeys. This is awesome for those who are dipping their toes in. Oh. Any, other, any other questions or comments people want to take, want to make that are on the journey also? 